Good day, everybody out there. Happy Friday to you, man. You know who it is. VJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funny, your Friday host for the breaks here on Infanity Television. Got a great show for you guys lined up. NFL, NBA, and university breaks. Some dope stuff that we got to talk about, man. So sit back, relax, sit tight. We'll be right back, and let's get ready for the breaks. And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. Friday, everybody. Welcome to the breaks. I'm your host for Fridays, VJ Vernon Husky, the big vanilla funny, the big vanilla poppy. Great show for you guys lined up today, man. So let's get right into it with some NFL news. Now, let me start this segment by telling you guys, I look, I love this city. I love Los Angeles. There's a reason why I left Woodbridge, Virginia, the DMV Bye -bye. area, and got on a Greyhound bus for three days with three duffel bag, Nike duffel bags of clothes, and my clippers, because I was a barber at the time, and came out to Los Angeles to uh, attempt stand-up comedy and acting. Not attempt, I was a comedian already back east, but make it make it in L.A., get on some big stages, headline some shows, maybe get in a movie or two or things of that nature. This was 19 years ago, so Ooh. my journey has been a long, great ride. And when I landed here, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any friends, any family, absolutely no one okay. I knew. And not only the city of Los Angeles, but the state of California. So I'm 3,000 miles away from home, just starting fresh, laid my head in a Motel 6 in Hollywood, and the rest is history. <laughs> I say all that to say because the one thing I love about this city is the energy. Los Angeles has an energy. D.C.'s got an energy. New York, energy. Houston, energy. Dallas, energy. Miami has an energy. Hawaii, Maui, Honolulu, they have a vibe, you know. Seattle has a vibe. You know what I'm saying? Detroit's got a grit, an energy. Just some cities have that. And Los Angeles just has this hype, happy-go-lucky, everything's chill, relaxed, type of energy here man hard working blue collar town don't let the red carpets and award shows and all the celebrity stuff and reality and the fact that all the movies are shot out here and all the tv shows are shot out here and all the commercials are shot out. don't let that fool you this city is grit this city has a hardcore energy about it a hard working energy about it and nine times out of ten it's teams and it's athletes mirror that i say that to start with the Los Angeles Chargers have made it official yesterday. They introduced my man, James Jacob Harbaugh, a.k.a. Y'all know I call him Jimmy Burgers, who just won my Michigan Wolverines a national championship at 15-0. It wasn't Michigan versus everybody. It finally being Michigan beat everybody's ass and held the trophy at the end. So he gets introduced yesterday, and I'm telling you guys, you can feel it. Like, you can feel it in, in the city. You can feel it in the city. It was like when Pau Gasol got traded here for Kobe. You could you could feel it. The energy was different. Shohei uh, Shohei Otani just signed with the Dodger. You that those those twenty four hours you can feel it. There was just an energy in this city that comes along with being uh, a Los Angelino. So I hope I said that correctly. I've been working on it. But yesterday, football energy is is back. There's a football energy that was missing. USC had this city on lock in the early 2000s. I wasn't even here. I was watching from the East Coast. But I talked to the OGs. I hear about it. I hear about the parties. I hear about the games. I hear about the tailgating. But Will Farrell, Snoop Dogg, all the celebrities, P. Diddy, all the celebrities in the back of the end zone waiting for Lindell White to score and give him the football are asking Snoop, what play should they run? Oh, hey, third and one from the one. Give, I say give it to Lindell White, homie. All right, they give it to Lindell White. He scores, give it to Lindell. Like, that was an energy that was here. Jimmy Burgers is here now as the coach of the Chargers. And I, I listen, if you live out here, you know it's a hard sell for the Chargers. This is a Raider town. This is a Laker town. This is a Dodger town. Everybody else is after that. The Kings, the Bruins, the Trojans. It's great and historical as USC is. I'm, the Lakers and Dodgers come before them, and it's not close. It's not close. They, people go to Dodger games when they're not good. 
People go to Laker games when they're not good. Then the Lakers are like the Knicks. They're like the Celtics, right? People, Dallas, the Cowboys, Duke, Carolina basketball. They when they're Kansas, UConn, when they're not good, fans still go because there's that grit and that energy and that love for the team. I always thought the Raiders should have been brought back here, but Vegas wants to get into sports. They're gonna have a baseball team soon. And I got a feeling they're gonna get some more professional teams out there. They got an NHL squad out there and they got a WNBA team out there. And both of those teams have hoisted the trophy at the end of the year. What this does is it actually brings football back to Los Angeles on a pro level. I understand that you have the Rams here, and that was big. You see a lot of Rams gear walking up and down Figueroa, but it's still a Raider town, even though the Raiders aren't here. I fully believe the Chargers now have a chance to put their stamp and their energy on this city of Los Angeles with this hire. I watched the press conference yesterday. Who's the first guy to speak? None other than Jim Hill. What is Harbaugh goes? Come on, man. I know, I know you're because you're, you're Jim Hill from, you know, KK. I'm not sure what network it is. Jim Hill from such and such and such. He goes, dude, I know who you are. You're a legend. Jim Hill goes, no, you're a legend. No, you're like, you're just that, that, you know, patting on the back, back and forth. That's an energy. But that's a blue collar type energy. Who's the second guy to speak and get his question in? Only L.A. Times probably best sports writer maybe of all time, Bill Pulaski. And he tells he goes, oh, my God, I'm opening up with all the with all the, the, the legends here. He goes, no, you're a legend, but thank you for pointing out that Jim Hill's a legend. Thank you for acknowledging. Like, that's what he brings, that type of energy. Like, it's back. I asked on Twitter, and I'll ask you guys out here in Brace University fan and Infinity TV fan uh, world. Tell me, can I do this? I believe you're allowed to have a side crush in sports. But your side crush can't do anything or have anything to do with your main squad. I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. Been one since 1983. But I love Jim Harbaugh. The very first football game I ever went to, my stepfather took me to the Washington Redskins and Chicago Bears at old RFK Stadium. Who's the quarterback for the Chicago Bears? Jim Harbaugh. Like, I'm connected with that guy. I watched him at Michigan as a young fan, win the Rose Bowl, win Big Ten Player of the Year. Like, I've captain come, come back for the Colts. I've, I've always been a Jimmy guy. Um, when he was coach at San Francisco, Ahmad Brooks, who was the middle linebacker from UVA, I was cutting hair at his dad's barber shop, Divine Styles and Cuts in Woodbridge, Virginia. You can look this up. Perry Brooks Sr., RIP to the Mr. Homie OG right there. He passed away, won a Super Bowl with the 83 Redskins while I was living in the DMV. Like Jimmy Harbaugh, I'm, I feel like I'm connected. And then, of course, he goes on and does what he does for Michigan. But that type of energy where he is brought here, the way that he can bring – I think a legitimate home team back to L.A. All they got to do is win. They have all the pieces there. They're going to try to figure out what they need to do with the salary cap. They're at about $45 million over. They got some work to do, and they have about $27 million in dead money, which means they just okay. let guys go. That's money they still have to pay out. These guys are multi-billionaires. Relax. They'll be fine. They, listen, he built, the, he built the damn stadium, okay? The stadium was $4 billion. That's why there's a concert every other night. They got to pay for that stadium back. You ever have a hot dog at SoFi? You ever have a $13 hot dog? Yeah, it gets that real at SoFi. But I believe that they do have some weapons there. I believe when he comes into the door, number one, he's taking over a 5-12 and 12 team. So right there, okay. eight, eight wins next year, nine wins next year is, is a positive. He's taking over a 5-12 and 12 team. We know they had some injuries. Doesn't matter. I don't do ifs and I don't do hypotheticals. I deal with fact that what happened. What happened is... They finish 5-12. and 12. So he takes over 5-12 and 12 team so he can turn around at round 5. You go and you look at the schedule for the Chargers next year. Guys, it's not daunting. Some of their road games. At Carolina, new coach, young quarterback. I believe they're at the Titans. Will Levis, is he going to outplay Herbert? Okay. No, uh, Derrick Henry. We don't expect him to be back. New coach there in Tennessee. I think they're at Cleveland. That'll be a tough game. Uh, I believe they play the Patriots next year. Like, new coach, new quarterback, right? I think the Patriots could be the worst team in football next year. They could be going for the number one draft pick. Number two, I mean, what, is they're sitting at three or four right now? Like, they're picking high right now. But uh, you look at the schedule, the schedule's not daunting. I think they can get the job done there. Then you look at some of the pieces that he have. Keenan Allen, you have uh, Bolson, needs to stay healthy. Derwin James needs to stay healthy. But you also have Justin Herbert. That's the thing in the NFL. If you have a quarterback, Jimmy has shown when you get your quarterback, remember, he found Colin Kaepernick. Nobody wanted him, right? Went to the Super Bowl with him. He found and recruited Andrew Luck. Went from 1-11 to 12-1 and in Stanford and won their first and only BCS Bowl win. Goes to Michigan, has some trouble until he finds J.J. McCarthy, first five-star recruit. 
15 and 0 win the national championship. This energy that Harbaugh is bringing is outstanding. I'm excited about it, and so you should be too. Because this is a city with the Rams, the Lakers, the Kings, the Bruins, the Trojans, the Dodgers. Like this, this is a sports town. And that's why I love LA, man, because it carries a great energy about it. It ain't all about uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame and Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. You know what I'm saying? Sports is real here. Jimmy Burgers is here. There's an opportunity to bring football back to Los Angeles other than the Rams. I'm ready for it. I'm here for it, man. Sit tight. When we come back, we'll get into Breaks University. I want to talk a little college hoops. I'll tell you who I'm talking about next, man. Coming up on the Breaks, your Friday edition. VJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funny. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumake with the LA Sparks and you are watching Infanity Television. <laughs> A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infanity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. Good afternoon. Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. VJ Vernon Husky here, the big vanilla funny on the bricks on Infinity TV. Before I get into uh, Breaks University, make sure you guys go to my social media and follow me. Facebook, VJ Vernon. IG, The Big Vanilla Funny. Twitter, The Big Vanilla Funny. And make sure you go to Infinity TV on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. We need to see them numbers growing. Don't tell us y'all supporting us. Y'all showing us mad love over here and we don't see the numbers coming up. Don't do us like that, man. Great content over here across the board. Winner. All the different shows. So, let's get into Breaks University because I want to talk some college hoops. I am on a one month a one month NBA binge. Other than trade deadline stuff and hometown Lakers stuff, I got to stay up on the hometown with the Lakers and the Clips. Clips playing great right now. But Winner. I'm on a one month kind of NBA binge, so I'm gonna dip into a lot of college basketball. Okay. And that brings me to we are at the part where tomorrow there's some big head to head. There's three all ranked opponent games against each other. A triple header tomorrow. But the big one we know is my beloved Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Tar Heels taking on that other bum ass school down Tobacco Road, about seven miles down the road. I don't know the name. I begin. I think it begins with a D and a mm -mm. U and, and so, J. Bye -bye. Will, Grant Hill, Christian Leitner, a bunch of those. Yeah, those guys. They all play there. Anyway, they match up tomorrow in the top 10 matchup. And that wanted to bring me to, I, I, I'm looking at the rankings. This is the time of year in college basketball where the, you, you can start to see the separation. Now, we're going to have upsets in March. We're going to have uh, Cinderella's do their thing. But this is where you start to really solidify yourself. Set yourself up for number one seed, number two seed. You definitely going into the bigger conference tournaments that will be coming up in about three weeks. You want the first two round buys. I do. I don't want to play the, the if, if we're in a 16 team league. 
I don't want to play 16 and 15. We beat you by 32 and 22 during the regular season. What the hell you think is going to happen on a Tuesday afternoon in front of a half arena with other teams showing up waiting to play their game like an AAU tournament? We don't bust your ass again. So we don't want to play you. So I like the fact that some of these bigger uh, conferences, the Big East, the Big Ten, the ACC, which I think today is still the best college basketball conference in the nation, uh, my beloved North Carolina Tar Heels sitting at number three in the nation right now. But some of the other teams that I wanted to get into, man, and then also talk about real quick um, a coach that I, I respect a lot. And this isn't homering. This is just real mm -hmm. talking. This ain't even notes. This is coming from the heart and off my basketball brain and mind. The very first Tar Heel jersey I ever owned, real talk, was a Hubert Davis jersey that was a hand-me-down from my older brother, Dennis. Real talk. That's the first Tar Heel jersey I had. And I always could shoot. I can okay. still go. I still got a Jimmy now. My jumpy is still nice now. I ain't really got a lot of handles. I ain't got a lot of wind. I can run maybe, you know, maybe two, three games. That's, that's about it. I was just talking to Jeff during the break. Mm -hmm. like, hey, listen, man, I, I got two in the four-year-old crib. I got to stay active and do some things, man. So I still like to go hoop whenever I can get out and do it a little bit. But the first jersey I had was a Hubert Davis jersey. So I was really excited when Hubert Davis got the job from Roy Williams at the University of North Carolina for their basketball program there. Schools like that, you keep it in-house. You know what I'm saying? It's like you – I don't mind John Shire got the job. I would have liked Chris Carwell to have gotten the Duke job, but I didn't mind John Shire getting it. I, I get it, wink, you know. But I wanted Chris Carwell um, to get that position there. Uh, Michigan football. It, it's only right after Rich Rod. You got to go bring back a, a Michigan guy, a Bo Schembechler, a Bo Schembechler guy. It, it, you, you, you just have to. I would love to see Bama maybe go up the Nick Saban tree, a.k.a. Snitch Saban, and, <laughs> and grab one of those guys And then, uh, other than bringing in a hot coach from uh, Washington. But when Carolina gave the job, to um, Hubert Davis, I it, it, it did my heart so good. Bye -bye. And then he kept guys like Sean May, who won a national championship, went to back-to-back -to -back Final Fours for the North Carolina Tar Heels. You keep a guy like that, you keep it in the family there. His first year, they're in eighth seed. They get to the national championship game. And in that season, they beat Duke on their senior night on Coach K's last home game. Okay. Then in the Final Four, they beat Duke's ass again in Coach K's last game, sent him and his lady off with their heads down. Hey, what is what it is with the camera shot on him? Like, hey, yeah, bye bye. This is what Carolina like. We sent Coach K to the rocket chair. Michigan, we sent Nick Saban to the rocket chair. It feels good when you're on that side and not on the other side. Jacksonville fans always tell me, yeah, we sent Marino to the rocket chair, sixty-two to seven. Ouch! That it, it, it happened. But they get to the national championship game. They're up. They're beating Kansas, and then things fall apart. Last year, there was a lot of stuff going on within the team. I'm not going to get into it because it's the past, but people that know, know. And if you don't know, then you just don't know. But you can see the difference. Some numbers I want to throw you guys out here. First 20 games last year, Carolina was 14-6, 79.6 points, which is a 7.4 difference in a game. This year, first 20 games, 17-3, and 83 more points. 14.1 difference. The difference has been R.J. Davis, the the USA, you know, top recruit guy, not number one recruit, but he's, you know, top 50, top 20 guy, <clears throat> excuse me, recruited when he came out of, uh, when he came out of high school, is now showing that he's not only the ACC player of the year, he could very well be the national player of the year. And there's one reason why, coaching. And that's Hubert Davis. Hubert Davis learned from, think about it. He played under, he played under Dean Smith. Okay. And then you come back and you're assistant for 12 years under Roy Williams after having a, a 10 plus year, nine or 10, maybe between nine and 11 NBA career, right? Playing under Pat Riley with the Knickerbockers who got to finals, like went up against Jordan in Eastern conference finals, went up against Reggie Miller and the Pacers. Like his, his history, Hubert Davis's history of basketball is pretty impressive, but it's not something that's all, always uh, talked about and prepped up. And that's why I wanted to take this moment today in uh, Breaks University to talk up Hubert Davis and a job he's doing. They're coaching better this year than last year because there was some inner team turmoil. You get that out, Caleb Love is gone. He's doing fine at Arizona where he was, started hot, but we're starting to see – who the guy was from last year, because it was either, was it going to be Kayla Love, was it going to be R.J. Davis? It's R.J. Davis. 
Simple as that. Carolina, Duke, tomorrow night. They'll take that one. Also, watch UConn. UConn's playing really well right now. Purdue's playing really well right now. And I like Tennessee and what Houston have going on. As the weeks go on, we'll get into more college basketball because college football is done. So university, breaks university for me, is always going to be just straight up college hoops because I think it's a better game in the NBA. Plus, we got the fast break segment coming up next here on the break. So we'll get to some NBA there too. But show some love to my Tar Heels, man. Hubert Davis, I love you, homie. Thank you for keeping it real and keeping it ugh, keeping it tough at Carolina, man. Coming up next on fast break, I'm going to tell you guys what I told you three years ago who needs to be traded. All that and more coming up on your Friday edition of The Breaks. I'm VJ Vernon, Husky the Big Vanilla Funny. This is Infinity Television. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumake with the LA Sparks and you are watching Infinity Television. <laughs> Nation. 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 A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infanity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to your Friday edition of The Breaks. I'm your host, VJ Vernon Husky. As always, the big vanilla funny, the big vanilla poppy. I'm never going to stop saying that. You're going to keep hearing it. I like it. And, you know, some other people like it. Anyway, <laughs> let's get right into Fast Break, man. One of my favorite segments here. And, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm going to try to do this without banging on the NBA. I'm going to try to do this without banging on the NBA. But I got to keep it a buck. I got to keep it honest. I got to keep it real. I got to keep it a hundo, Okay. The league I'm watching right now is a bad product. What I'm seeing on the television, league-wide, mm -mm. is a bad product. And it, as I said earlier in the show, when you live in a city like Los Angeles, sports is huge. Sport, go into a, If you've never been to a Laker game, it's, it's a show. It really is. When I go to Laker games, I'm fresh. Okay. I'm, I'm my lady fresh. My kids fresh. Hey, ain't nobody slumming. I don't care where you're sitting. That don't matter. Everybody ain't got $3,700 for court side seats. Boom. If you don't know, some nights, that's what them joints go for. I've been lucky enough Howie. to be in this business, so I've been in some company skyboxes and some network skyboxes for games. That experience is dope within itself, but you better be fresh walking in there too. It's a certain level of love and energy and show and effort and grit that goes into sports. And in a city lost like, like Los Angeles, we have the Lakers. We, we had Cap. We've had Magic. We've had Shaq. We've had Kobe. Kobe encompasses what L.A. really is. And I think that's why his, 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 iconic, his iconicness and his legendary status is what it is because 
whether you liked him or not when you first got here, when he was young or whatever the case may have been with Kobe, at the end of the day, you knew when he went out there, he gave everything he had every single night, especially at home. You can point to the game seven in Phoenix and stuff. Listen, there's always little intricacies and variables for everything and everybody. I'm a guy in this business that gets and understands that. But the meat of what somebody is is what I'm always going to go by. Winner! You know what I'm saying? Like somebody tells you the truth 98 times and they lie to you twice, you don't call them a liar. Maybe, maybe you might have asked him if you look fat in that dress. He didn't want to hurt your feelings, so he told you a lie. You might have asked him, hey, man, you think my girl look good? He didn't want to hurt your feelings. They're like, yeah, she's straight, go. Where you meet her at? The zoo? No, I'm just playing. But the whole point I'm making is the product that's <laughs> on the court right now, it's not good. The scoring is out of hand. The defense is out of hand. The non-rebound is out of hand. The officiating is out of hand. Even the way that they market and do things, it's just out of hand. The NBA, I feel like, is always trying to sell me their league when all I want you to do is make guys do their job and play and get on the court. And what I want from the players is for you to actually act like you give a damn across the board. I know there's some guys in the league that care a whole lot. They eat, drink, crap, sleep, everything, basketball. But I know there's some guys in the league, and I've done so many shows with former athletes from every professional league except for, oh, nope, I did do a show with a guy from the NHL. Never mind. So every, all the all the pro leagues, I've done radio shows or either TV shows with someone that played in every pro league. They all say the same thing. There's some guys, man, they fight hard in AAU, they fight hard in high school, they fight hard in college just to get to the NBA, okay. and then they coast. They get there on time. They leave when practice is over. They don't shoot early. They don't catch extra passes. They don't do three hours of extra batting. I had a guy tell me yesterday, very, very prominent betting guy in Vegas, Bernie Fratto. You can catch him over there where I'm at, too, on the other spot. Good guy. You guys need to look him up. He knows his stuff. Told me that he was at a tournament, watched Tiger Woods win on the final day. Then he watched Tiger Woods go to the driving range as people were leaving. After the trophy presentation and all the kisses and hugs and all of that stuff, the champagne popping, Everybody's leaving. He has them cut the lights on at the range. He goes over to the range and hits a thousand balls. After he had just won a tournament. Think about that. Could you imagine someone winning the NBA championship and then Winner. cameras are video surfacing that they took 500 jumpers after the arena, after the champagne, after everybody went home. He sent his wife and his kids home, told him I'll be home in the morning. I'm going to stay, just stick around. Talk, all the coaches left. Maybe it's just him and the owner and the gym and the head coach. And he thinks, you know what? Let me grab one ball. Boy, hey, boy, I throw you 500 tonight. They made that kind of money in the NBA. I'm going to throw you five stacks. Just get the ball swing, man. And puts up 500 jumpers? You would never... Never see that in today's game from today's player. Go up and look at the Jalen Brunson clip from last night after the Knicks game. That's what it's about. That's what you want to see in this league. We don't have a lot of that now. I'm sorry, we just don't. And it's and when your leaders are soft, the product's going to be soft. Your family's going to be soft. The job's going to be soft. The leadership, true leadership mm -mm. happens when you're not there. So the commissioner can't really be everywhere, right? But you're the leader. When David Stern was the commissioner of this league, David Stern was tough and people didn't like it. But he was tough. But that made the players tough because the top star, Michael Jordan, had to be tough. Patrick Ewan had to be tough. Shaq, Olajuwon, Gary Payton. Like, I could go to Carl Malone, John Stockton. I can go through the era. Magic, Bird, I could, Dr. J, Moses, I could go through 25 years of guys that knew you got to be tough. You got to play hard. You got to play every night. You got to stick it out. There's no, the, the glitz and the glamour. You didn't think Magic Johnson had glitz and glamour. You didn't think that Wilt Chamberlain, who is rumored to have slept with 20,000 women, didn't have glitz and glamour. They, all that stuff was still there too. Social media right now just makes you think that it wasn't and that it's something different. And it's not. But now the product is falling. Because the softness is really set in. And I'll get into more of this next week on Fast Break. This is a topic I'm really going to bang on as hard as I can, man, because this is crazy. What we're seeing, guys not playing. And if the league has to institute a rule for you to play a certain amount of games to qualify for awards, that's insane. And once again, to Owie. revert back to the NBA, you're always trying to sell me something. Just give me the product that, I'm, that we're asking for. Like a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, right? Okay. Who the hell ever thought putting tomato and avocado made it better? All you had to do is just toast the bread, a little butter, slice American cheese, scrambled eggs, 
few strips of bacon, put the sandwich together, cut it in a triangle. Okay, I like my sandwiches cut in a triangle. And let's, and let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stop trying to add things, NBA. You think you're making a product better. You're making the product worse by having soft people as the superstars in the face and the top guy is soft. So it just filters down. Scoring out of hand. You guys don't rebound. No defense. Fix the product, please. I will not be watching NBA for a month other than Lakers stuff. No All-Star weekend for me. I mean it. No dunk contest, no three-point shootout, no game. I'm not watching it, man. VJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funny. This has been your Friday edition of The Breaks, man. Y'all check us every Friday, 3 p.m., every day during the week, 3 p.m. God bless.